I think charcoal is definitely one of the more versatile drawing medias, mediums, and um, there's so many different ways you can work with it, so many different tools. So I'm going to go over a few of the basics here. Um, mm -hmm. We have a few different types of charcoal sticks. Um, there's vines, and uh, vine and willow. So this is the willow. Um, it tends to be more round. Um, it can be thin sticks, thick sticks, um, and it tends to have a bit of a darker, softer kind of feel rather than vine. Um, this is the vine charcoal. Um, lots of different um, manufacturers, manufacturers will make this. But one of the nice things is you can also get these really nice sized blocks of willow and vine. Um, you know, so you can really play with making some bold, big marks. This one was a, a company called Bob's Fine Fine Charcoal. I think I got it on Blick, uh, the Blick website. So, just taking a look at some of these. So this is the Willow Charcoal, and you can see it has like a nice soft quality to it. You can break the sticks up and work with them in different ways, either with the end, sort of making thinner lines like this, or turning it on its side, going for bolder strokes. The really nice thing about the willow is it's very easy to blend and also to erase. So, you know, taking just like a paper towel, can blend the surface in. And what this does is it creates a really nice ground for your drawing. So, you know, this can be an interesting way to just um, start a sketch or a drawing is to, you know, start with your vine or your willow charcoal just laying down a nice little surface of material. And this sort of becomes can be a starting ground for some of the mid-tones in your drawing. You know, once we have you know, a bit of an initial ground to work from, one of the main, I think, exciting things about charcoal is that when you're working with it, you're going both additively and subtractively. So additive meaning adding mark. So we already added some mark. We can add more on top of this. We can add value, we can add lines, and then with charcoal you can also work, work subtractively. So taking something like an eraser, going in and removing material. And so this is a way to start to build highlights, to layer marks one on top of the other. So, again, back to our materials with charcoal. So we're looking at, we have some different sticks available. Um, there's also compressed charcoal, which is going to be an even darker um, sort of mark. It's uh, very heavy. Sort of the, initially the sort of almost darkest, blackest you'll get with charcoal right off the bat. Um, without needing to layer much. So that can be handy if you're maybe working with something that where the overall scene is darker or you want to go right into some shadows. Um, you can work more with compressed charcoal. I tend to not uh, use it a lot um, uh, because it can start to take over very quickly. Like as I said in the beginning, I really like to layer um, and sort of build at a pace. So um, I tend to go more with pencils or um, or the uh, willow charcoal um, because it can really, you know, build up a nice a nice surface. It's easy to erase, you know, add and then erase from. So we've got our sticks: the willow, the vine compressed charcoal, and then there's charcoal pencils. 
Um, this brand, Generals, is generally a pretty good one. They're orange. Um, they have, with charcoal pencils, you're, you're, like other pencils, they have different hardness, which I'll get into in a little bit, but generally you're going to be looking at soft, medium, or hard, and this is just um, talking about um, how, uh, how much of the charcoal is going to come off um, on your page in a, in a basic stroke. So a harder pencil, a harder charcoal pencil is going to have a lighter mark initially, whereas something softer is going to be a little bit darker to start. So we've got our pencils and then another great tool for charcoal are these blending stumps. And this is just paper rolled up tightly and sharpened. These come in different sizes. You can get smaller ones for detail or bigger ones. And these could be really handy when you're working on something and you want to just kind of slowly blend a, a little area of the drawing without having with having a little bit more control than if you were to come in with a piece of you know paper towel or a cloth and they can sort of double both as blending and um, a little bit as an eraser They'll definitely pick up material and they can also sort of be work additively you know especially when you're sort of working into a really detailed area if the if the stump has a bit of material on it it can also add marks but generally you're using it to help blend in a more detailed way than uh, a large area like I did at the beginning. One of the other really fun tools to work with in charcoal is powder. So you can get jars of charcoal powder. This one's Create a Color. There's a lot of different brands. And just like the name says, it's powdered charcoal. And what's really fun about this is you can create all sorts of interesting effects and, and washes with it. So you can, similar to what we did in the beginning, you can take a little bit of it and use it to just create an area of tone. Again, this can be a way to start a drawing, just laying down um, a nice area of tone to build on. Um, also great for working into shadows, and you can you know, can use it in sort of a specific way where you just put a little bit of, of it in a jar, take um, a rag or a, a paper towel, and then come in and just start you know, applying it to little areas. Another nice thing to play with, um, especially with the powder, is to use a brush. Uh, I need to grab my brush. Where's my brush? Oh, come back to the brush. Um, you can take, you know, any sort of uh, any brush uh, that you have on hand um, and use that to move the charcoal around. Um, can create create nice textures and layers. And then again, you know, once we've created some of our surface and created um, some, some work additively, 
you come in with your eraser, so a couple different options for erasers. Um, I generally like to use these kneaded erasers with charcoal. They um, usually come in little blocks like this. It's just a sort of gum that you can um, mold and manipulate in your hand. And <clears throat> I find these are really nice with charcoal. They pick up material really well. And then you just sort of mold it to a clean area and go back in. And you can just get all sorts of different shapes uh, with this. You can get nice big, um, you can remove nice big areas. You can also work it, kind of mold it down to a finer point. And just sort of get little go in for kind of more detailed work. And you know, with this, the, depending on how, um, how much pressure you use, it can you know, sort of be both used for blending and for erasing. So you know, with a little bit of a lighter touch, it's only picking up a little bit of material, kind of working to blend it as well, and then you press a little bit harder, and you're, you start picking up more material. So that's sort of my main eraser for charcoal. Um, there's a couple other tools that are really handy um, that I'll use, especially if I'm doing something that's getting into more detail. There's these uh, mechanical erasers. This one's by uh, Generals, the brand. Um, it's their mechanical eraser. It's got a pretty thick tip. Um, but this can be really nice for doing some detailed work subtractively. So you can see you can get these nice fine lines. You can even start to get into building layers of mark, like cross-hatching. You know, and then as, it, as the eraser um, sort of gets used up, you just click it to expand it. You can also shape this tip a little bit. Um, if you take like a, a knife or razor, you can um, cut it down a little bit if you even want to go for a finer point. And then there's also, there's an even smaller size. Uh, this one's by Tombow. It's called the Mono Zero, another mechanical eraser with an even finer tip. And they have this both with a sort of small round tip and with more of a square flat tip. So again, just nice for getting, kind of work, being able to work with an eraser more like a pencil. And then one other tool with charcoal that um, can be really fun. This uh, this one I made. This is um, this is basically the end of a sock, cut off, and filled with charcoal powder. Um, and then just some rubber bands to hold it shut. This is actually two layers. There's two socks, so two layers of sock on this. Um, and what this is great for is you can kind of use it to apply your charcoal powder and then also kind of blend it in. So this can be a really fun way to, um, again, start a drawing to kind of start to shape your areas of dark and light. So you can go in and start finding your shadows um, with this tool. Um, just a nice way to kind of apply it and then again blending as needed. So, you know, as you can see, I mean, a lot has happened on this page already and we've kind of, you know, just wiped it all away and come back to an 
a pretty blank slate. Um, you know, this is just, could be a ground starting point for a drawing. Um, you know, generally with charcoal, if I'm going to approach a drawing or a sketch, you might start with a harder pencil, so maybe something that's like a medium or, um, or hard hardness, and I'm just going to set up a little apple here for myself to draw and just kind of show you what, what I might do to um, approach a drawing. So we could start with just a quick kind of really light sketch just to kind of help me orient my composition, where the kind of shapes are going to fall on the page. For me, one of the one of the biggest challenges with drawing, especially if I'm working in a little bit of a larger scale, um, really anything over a regular letter-sized piece of paper can be almost orienting the um, the perspective of the different shapes on the page. So the relationships between the shapes, um, you know, sometimes my eye just has trouble. You know, for instance, I might be drawing a face, and um, you know, I get. I get you know part way through the drawing and realize one eye is here and the other is way down here, um, you know. So I like to just initially really lightly work just to kind of find the relationships of the different shapes to one another. Um, that's a really uh, it's one way to to kind of begin a drawing when you're working, especially observationally. Um, work lightly, um, look at you know find the shapes you're drawing, and just what are the major shapes you know. Um, how, how do they relate to one, one, one another in terms of size and spatially? Um, you know, and then go in and kind of work into some of the other details, the, other, the smaller shapes, just building those relationships. So we'll start with an initial little sketch, and then we've already got quite a bit of material down, so I'm going to go in with the eraser and start to just find some of the highlights in here. And so one of the nice things about drawing is, you know, letting, letting the mark really build up on the page. You know, we don't need to, like, constantly work back to just pure page white. You can really let some of these textures remain and become a part of the finished, of the finished piece. So then I love working with the um, willow charcoal, so I'm just going to go in here and start to like define where some of the edges are. Another um, exercise to um, explore when you're working observationally is to try just playing with light. So even not even so much worrying about the specific objects you're drawing, but what are the what are the shapes of the light? Finding the shadows, finding the highlights, and really just letting yourself draw those for a while and getting familiar with sort of how light falls across objects. So another um, option just for something to blend with, this is just cheesecloth. So you can see the fun thing about charcoal is it just it comes and goes so easily. Yeah, and it just it has this almost ethereal quality to it. And 
so what I would suggest, especially if you're new to something like charcoal, is to really um, play with this for a while and just find different ways that the you can work with the material on the page to you know really just see how it behaves, you know, and what sort of um, kind of interesting textures um, and uh, lines and marks you can come up with. Uh, one thing I'm going to emphasize quite a bit today is not being afraid to go dark. Um, I think it's one of the main things we avoid when we initially begin drawing, is just letting ourselves go really dark, you know, really letting yourself get expressive with the material in terms of the, the different quality of mark that you can make. You know, if I just take this little piece of willow charcoal, I can make a really gentle, fine line with it. I can make a really bold, deep line with it. And so letting yourself start to get comfortable with that. You know, and I like seeing sometimes just how many times I can sort of build and rebuild a surface and something I'm working on. Um, be good to say a little bit about paper. So when you're working with charcoal, um, it's good to have a paper that has a bit of a tooth to it. Um, one brand I generally go to is Strathmore. Um, their 400 series of paper has uh, all sorts of, um, a couple different options for drawing. There's, um, there's a basic 80 pound um, drawing paper with a smooth surface that can be really nice for charcoal. Um, this one I'm using here is, uh, is their heavyweight drawing paper, so it has a little bit more tooth to it. Um, the toothier paper can help to um, almost build up darker areas more quickly um, and it can tend to hold more material it lasts a bit longer but um, I sometimes find that I can't always work back to getting the paper as light as I would like it especially if I've worked with many layers so I actually tend to use more of the um, smooth paper um, the Strathmore um, smooth drawing paper So when you're working um, with your material, one thing you can play with is contour. So looking for the shape of the object, almost as if you're a sculptor. You know, so I'm sort of, you can see, letting myself go around this apple, sort of really almost imagining I'm running my material across it. And something that will add a lot of excitement to your drawing is also just letting yourself play with the textures. So, you know, letting the lines layer on top of each other. I think blending can be great, but it can become a little bit of a sort of overuse it 
always wanting to just kind of get these nice soft um, you know, shadows and gradations, but you can also build a lot of excitement by letting more texture show up in the drawing. I'm gonna leave that there for now. Yeah, the nice thing about charcoal is it's not it's not particularly toxic in any way. Um, you know, it might be a little irritating um, if you if you're blowing it around a lot and you get it in, but it's not it's not really toxic in the way that you know pigments are. And we don't really have to take the same precautions that we will when, when we start working with pastel. Um, as far as cleaning the area, um, sort of having a dedicated area for this is great. Um, or you can lay down, um, you know, some paper or some old paper shopping bags or um, a piece of board or something that you don't mind kind of getting messy. Um, you know, if you're working, kind of just setting up shop on a little table. Like here, I just I laid down a surface of paper on my drafting table um, just to keep it clean under what I was doing. I think one other thing just mentioned worth mentioning for charcoal um, when you're done with your drawing. Um, you may want to consider using a fixative to um, help seal it. Um, I'll talk about fixative a little more when we get to pastel, but it's, it's also something to consider um, when you're working with charcoal.